I mean, every episode starts different. I think it's kind of cool. Sometimes we'll start in the middle of a conversation. Sometimes we'll start with doing tests. Sometimes yeah. whatever. So I'm trying. I'm trying to use my lack of professionalism to my advantage. <laughs> I honestly just don't know what the fuck I'm so doing, do I. and I don't care enough to try <laughs> to format it. She's the one who only brings any kind of professionalism to me at all. <laughs> Like, you, you keep on the leash? You got the short that's, leash? That's a sad statement, if that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I just told you I wanted a mansion with the a swimming pool and a bowling alley. Yeah. It's a blind leading the blind over here. Yeah, but that's the American dream, so. I love the fact that you guys have, like, your minion gear on. Like, you got the same sweatshirt, the hoodie, well, yeah. with the logo. Ever since this was made, we don't take them off anymore. <laughs> right. <laughs> you just get big sweat stains in there. At this point, mine could, like, stand up by itself. <laughs> yeah, mine too. We're gonna, we're gonna be ready. Yeah, fine. <laughs> hey, everybody! I'm Oz of Tuesday Night the Basement. Thank you for listening. This is Notebook Entertainment Weekly presents Talking Dedersons. I'm here with the creators of the show, Quiz William. Quiz? <laughs> Quiz Williamson. Quiz I spelled my name with a Q now. Yeah. <laughs> Chris Williamson, Wyatt Elliott, thank you guys so much for coming. It's, it seems weird to start the show in the middle through that yeah, intro because we've been talking. It's what we do. It's it we seems do. so formal, too, because I feel like I know you guys now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we were just talking about, before uh, we, we went off on a little break, that we were talking about the show and about the influence the soap operas had on your, <laughs> on your One writing. One soap opera. It was General Hospital. My okay. mom and my aunt. We're like addicted to that since it came out mm. when they were kids. Yeah. So like when I came around and I just started watching because it was on TV, I wound up getting like the whole thirty years worth of backstory <laughs> for like every character and everything. So, Jesus, like, it's so hard. Every episode, like those soap operas, run for thirty, forty years, and every day they're adding every to day. the plot. How in the hell can anybody keep all it that shit in their head? Really really ridiculous like, oh my god i mean they built like weather machines <laughs> the cassadines they had a weather machine that yeah, we, I, that they wanted to unleash and like I I, mean, I everybody actually, gets amnesia like three times <laughs> and, like, i was gonna say i actually don't know do you still watch it i have not watched it since jason left the show uh, what <laughs> was that real jason it's been yeah. a couple of years Okay. Real Jason. No, the real Jason. They, they recast it. I saw that they recast it, and, and, and I'm not. I'm not down oh, with that. So you're on Team Jason, whoever team the fuck Jason. that is. Jason Quartermain. Jason Quarter. Oh, he has some a... people know. Some people know. <laughs> what Burton. a name. Steve Burton's his real name. I feel like he could have been in uh, Fifty Shades of Grey when I think about that name, Quartermain. Oh my yeah. God, there was that an would Alan be amazing. Yeah. yeah, there was an Alan Quartermain. The, there was an Alan Quartermain on the show. Yeah, yeah but the, then you got Alan Quartermain, you know, the the hunter in the, uh, in, the movie. in the graphic novels. Oh. It was graphic novels. Yeah, it was League and of then they did Gentlemen. the movie League oh. of yeah. Extraordinary Gentlemen, movie. and Sean Connery played Alan Quartermain. And they really yeah. watered it down, by the way. Like yeah. the yeah. first is the graphic novel. The yeah. graphic oh, novel is so watered down. Like. The, the, I, I haven't had the pleasure to read it. But. The graphic novel is like you got like. There's actually four graphic novels, and it 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 goes it gets crazy. It becomes like <laughs> they get into time travel and people live forever. And it sounds awesome to me. It's weird. Like you got Doctor Jekyll, Mister Hyde, and a lot of people didn't like the rapist. movie. I liked the movie. I loved the movie. I liked the movie. Did you like the movie? I did. I liked it at first. Like I liked it when I I like it in the same way that I like campy movies. Like I was watching, going like, oh, this is shit, but like. I like it's it. It's entertaining as hell. Yeah. Like, I, that's weird. And I, I have a huge crush way. on Shane really? West, yeah. so I oh. was down. Anything yeah. with Shane was West, that, Was that down. Tom Sawyer? Did he yeah. play Tom Sawyer? Yeah. yeah. The graphics were horrible, though. Oh, like, well, were, yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in hindsight. I'm not saying it was a great it. movie. I like, remember when the Nautilus came out at the dock, I was like, how deep is that water? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That was the first thought in my head. You're supposed to suspend the imagination. It was difficult in that moment. <laughs> you know what? I do think it's funny how some movies hold up, some don't. I just recently watched Dark Man again for the first time in a long time. Oh, wow. And, uh, That's back before he was killing people, like the Taken franchise, right? That was him, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, that was, that was, that was like Who's that? Who's Liam Neeson? Liam yeah. Neeson. Yeah. And I, you know what? Some of the graphics are a little cheesy now and stuff like that, but I still thought it held up. And I, I, would, I was so amazed at how watching it now, I knew so much more about the production like the very last shot it's bruce campbell and i didn't know that i didn't know that bruce campbell was even in it is he but really it sense because sam raimi from evil dead directed it so oh, wow. and i haven't seen the one in so long know. yeah it's it's on netflix now i recommend watching the game scene. absolutely uh, after I'm right you now, watch the dedersons yeah, yeah. <laughs> watch the dedersons first right now i'm, I'm uh sort of like 
Gert, I'm, I'm, I'm watching through the that series Enterprise, which is the prequel to Star Trek. Oh, it's really yeah. not good. Yeah, but, somebody uh, was talking about that at one of our shoots recently too. Yeah, I'm, I just have to watch it because I like the Star Trek universe, so I have yeah. to know this stuff. But it's not a great <laughs> show, and I hate to Paul the I character. I think it's. I don't think I've ever seen it, but I know Scott Bakula's in it. They change like, <laughs> and I hear he's boring in it. I hear like he's very Scott boring. Bakula is boring in it. He's which... his acting is wooden. He he does lines like this. Like somebody will say that he'll go. But what does that mean? <laughs> and you're like, kind of like you maybe he was, he was trying to be the next Shatner. Yeah, I don't think I think he's <laughs> just <laughs> bad. If it's a prequel, maybe he was. And the, the I hate the. I'm sorry, we're going off on a little tangent. Yeah, exactly. I'm going off on a tangent. I hate the fucking theme song to that show. I, to Enterprise, I don't even know what it is. It doesn't sound like if you're if you're a Star Trek fan fan. Nope. Uh, okay, I am. I'm a big Star <laughs> Trek fan. A casual fan, I would say. I am. Okay, you notice if you watch like Voyager and Deep Space Nine and Next Generation and Star Trek, the themes are all orchestral. Right. Like that's a through line of the of the shows. Right. And then this one is like just like a knockoff, like light rock song. Mm. It's got words to it. What? Yeah, it's well, weird. That's weird. It, it stands weird, out. Yeah. You know, a little little fact that I learned, um, well, years ago now, but like I remember when I, I was a fan of Next Generation. Okay. And then when I went back and watched Star Trek The Motion Picture, I didn't realize that that theme song had come from the motion picture that they used in The Next Generation. It was not original. No way. I didn't even notice that. Mm-hmm. It was actually the theme song for the motion picture, which is terrible, by the way. Oh, teach me some shit. Mm. Thank you for that, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I feel educated. Going back to the Dedersons, like... So you, one of the things you said about writing all those, uh, writing out all those uh, plots together is because you have a little ADD going on, <laughs> and so you have to like it's not enough for you to just focus on one plot line at a time, right? Well, there's that, and like I don't know, I feel like the the more story we tell, the mm-hmm. more interesting it is. It's like if we're just focusing, okay, this episode is just about Delia and Ash and Stacy and Cliff trying to you know figure out the whole zombie human relationship thing like then you're missing out on what's happening with everyone else and i want to know what's happening with everyone else you know but don't you feel like that could be like that could be an episode like it could be like i feel like a I, lot of the the storylines that you write there's so much meat in them that i feel like you could flesh them out like like the whole thing between um well, maybe not the kids. Well, I guess you could do an episode just about the kids' relationship. But like, let's talk about the relationship between. Uh, I always, I always forget the characters like Big Brother Dedison, Donnie, Donnie, and uh, best friend, who's Stacy. Like that could be a, that or could she's be an got episode. That crush on him. Yeah, she's got this unrequited love, and he's just like oblivious, and she's always well, trying to get his attention. I, and to that, I would say, if we weren't a monthly show, maybe. Ah, that's but a good you point. Know, like yeah. when you've only got one show, and it's a half hour. I mean, we push it to forty minutes with our special holiday episodes. But mm-hmm. like, if it's a half hour, you've got a half hour to tell a story once a month. I just want to stick as much in there right. as I can. And try and make it as in depth as possible in those you know few moments that they're on screen. Mm. And I think that the talent of our cast is what helps make it believable. Right. And makes it where you're like, okay, well, I only got to see them for like two minutes, but I want to, I want two more minutes. I want to figure out what's going on. You know that sort of thing. We've actually had fans come to us and be like, what's going to happen to so and so next? I can't, you know, I can't wait. What's going to happen? And. You know, the answer is always, oh, we don't know yet. But, you know, like going, and I, I feel like I've told this story before, but going into it. They really don't know, by the way, everybody. Yeah. I don't know <laughs> like I ask them and they're like, we don't fucking know. I'm like, <laughs> people, people ask me like, I'm going to know. You know? <laughs> like right. They swear, they really think that like she tells me this stuff and I'm just can't. Like at liberty to say, but I'm yeah. like, I really have no. You're all fucking Game of Thrones and shit over yeah, there. I have, I, no, I, I have no idea. Like, yeah. I, I'm the writer, and well, I, I don't know. What was it the other day? I suggested something, and she goes, "That's not a bad idea. I might have to go with that." <laughs> <laughs> do you, Do you have like when you think about your characters? Do you have ideas? Like, do you have like a bunch of ideas about where you want the show to go? No. Or where, no. <laughs> I just just know, his cubs? I just know who each character is because I mean, I, I don't know about other writers, but for me, it feels like. I've known these people my whole life because they've been up here. Mm. <laughs> and each one of them has some part of me in them. They say things that I say or do things that I would do. But I try and make them all different at the same time. And so I think that's where it's at is like yeah. I know who they are. And so that makes it so when it is time to sit down and write the episode, I I can react like they are. 
Okay. Are we going to look at another clip from the I, show? I think we should. All right, let's do that. We're going to check out a clip, everybody. Stay tuned. Well, <laughs> I really don't see why you would care anything about what your Frankie wants, considering you're still married to Bob. Really, Harriet, you're becoming as trashy as the rest of this town. Well, maybe it's you and Ben who should move away and let us live our trashy little lives in peace and quiet. Instead of you and your blowhard husband running all around town acting important when you're nothing but a big joke. <laughs> so, um, I, I, I actually one of the one of the, the plot lines that I find to be the most heartfelt and the and one of the ones that I want the most resolution on is the is the story of Ash and his parents. Yeah. We sort of hear, I hear that a lot. <laughs> because that's the one like all the other things that are happening in the show, like they're important, but it's all mostly about people getting what they want and like the stuff between the Dedersons and the Midnight it almost seems like a matter of pride. And with the kids and their relationships, it's just sort of misunderstanding. But Ash is a character that seems like he's really lost something real. Like that's a horrible like thing to happen like he's lost his parents they might be dead he doesn't know they're out there somewhere he's grown up with a sort of like uh, like this 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 town is his uh his sort of adoptive family but he just wants his family and he can't find him that that seems like the motivation for why he's so open to learning more about the right. people living on the dead side of the walls because he's like my parents could be one of them mm-hmm. like he has this connection yeah. To that and world. That's that's what I love about Ash and why I think I've made the character bigger than what it was intended to be, mm. um, is because he's the one that everyone can identify with because he's the human character. Right. It's like it's hard to identify. I mean, even though these zombies may be going through the same things that we would be going through, um, they're zombies. It's hard to identify with them. But whereas Ash, he's got you know, human emotions. And even though it would be the same, whereas if Delia was like, well, my parents could be in the living city, you know, Mm -hmm. I got to go find my parents in the living city. You're still not going to identify with her as much because she's the zombie, you know? You could identify with like as an outcast though, right? Like if her family's in the human side and they don't understand that she's not a, uh, uh, you know, like a flesh eating zombie anymore, that she actually had emotions, but they got all these weird stereotypes and they don't know how to feel about it. that's, That's kind of where the social, you know, kind of the 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 modern social commentary con, yeah commentary conflict i think is is what's coming out more and more in my writing yeah is how i feel about what's happening in our world where we're getting divided because of fear because of oh don't don't like these people they're different than us you know whereas ash is like well they're different, but we also have a lot in common, you know, and mm. my parents could be one of them, you know, that, that, that he's, I think the one that's helping bridge that gap of understanding and Delia is going to help him do that. You know, right. I think that's generally where they're going, whether he finds his parents or not. I have no idea if he's going to or not. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> what are you but doing that, to us? That's what I see is they're the two that like they're the hope. You know, yeah. They they represent the hope that as a society, even though we go through different things, and you know we can come together in some ways and see each other as you know equally living things, equally, equally deserving human. of having life, of living life with freedom, with mm-hmm. you know everything that comes with freedoms of the modern world. That's something that I tell her all the time. Like she has come to me with concerns on is it getting, you know, to this, to that, am I getting to right. I don't and, want to push an agenda. Right. right. And and I've often said it, it is not does not feel preachy to me. It feels like she is taking modern concerns and modern world events and making them into a story the best fiction comes from reality mm-hmm. you know and if it's timely it's timely you know south park has made 10 years of timely shows right. entertaining and i feel and they're much more on the nose like they're <laughs> very yeah, much I'm, right. I'm very yeah. much hiding an innuendo right. and, and... i mean star wars is history if you really get into it lucas will tell you everything in star wars is history he's a history buff right. so like it's all of that so there is no such thing as an original idea you have to if you, when I agreed originally a long time ago to do this and to do the data sense, I expected it to be episode one, you know, him getting fired. Episode two, it's some wacky adventure that the Dedersons are going to do. And 
it didn't turn out that way, but I'm so much happier that yeah, it's he not. He expected it to be like standalone episodes, like sitcoms yeah. are. You know, they don't necessarily. Yeah, I think that's kind of what I was expecting too. Yeah, I, I, I and again, was... that's probably my my uh, General Hospital influence. So it's like <laughs> they've got to follow along. You know, but uh, if you watch, <laughs> there's you know, a whole world here. We had the marathon recently, and when you watch in six months' time, it's come so um, long. It's come so far mm-hmm. in the evolving of the show that I think it's just fantastic and um, and I think our audience is seeing it it's fantastic because they obviously are enjoying it and are agreeing with us and you know the newest episode aired a day ago and we, we're over 500 views already yeah, so. yeah it's doing really well mm-hmm. it's really cool to see that to see that people are watching like yeah I, I wish I had your numbers. <laughs> I'm very jealous. I'm trying for you. I'm but trying. I, I wish you all the success and everything, <laughs> both of you. Um, uh, before we go, like I had, I did write down a couple of questions. Like I don't want to. Like there's a couple of things I have to get off my chest here. When, when, there was a uh, part of the show. This is hard segue. Part of the show. Wow. <laughs> I can, the camera sees you. It's all okay, good. Okay. <laughs> there was a. Part what can you see? I, I, I can That's see the top hard. of your head. Like, <laughs> There was there was a, a part of the show where the kids, uh, uh, Dennis Dederson and then his little girlfriend to be little Emily. buddy and romance Emily, were, um, where they were inside. What was it like a little shop? Yes, yeah, like um, Brain Busters. Brain Busters. <laughs> where you guys film that? It's a mall shop. Oh. At Kate's Pie Shop. At Kate's Pie Shop. Yeah. Okay, um, and they were in like they were the girls were having this very adult conversation about <laughs> what it is you got to do to like appeal to a man or appease him or make him want you and it's like you gotta you gotta appeal to his to his pride you gotta make it feel like he's necessary you well, gotta build up his quoting, ego she was quoting her older sister who is this, heather shockley which is the one that is you know in the war with delia right you yeah. know the, she's the, crazy the popular one. girl war <laughs> so i mean Obviously, she's not going to have the greatest ideas about <laughs> relationships and men. And that's why we even have little Shelly says, well, she also says this. So maybe you shouldn't listen to what Heather yeah, yeah. says. You know? It was very cute, though. Yeah. It's, it's really cute watching kids have adult conversations. Well, that's the thing, though, is what's scary is it's adult conversations to us because we didn't talk like that when we were kids. Mm-hmm. But like that's what kids talk like yeah. now. Oh, no. I, I talk way worse now when I was a kid. Well, they do. But what I think is mind-blowing is the one kid that we had on the show who's not on more, but where his Facebook and he shouldn't have had a Facebook at 10 but he <laughs> does and he, his status was like well I guess I'm single again but that won't be for long I'm like at 10 I wasn't even thinking about that you weren't no like, god we, no oh when I was a kid we had I was thinking we, about where my next meal was going to come from but anyways no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding to put it he's in perspective he's not kidding, yeah. he's not kidding. Okay. to put it in perspective <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. But, but the point is that I didn't have thoughts like that yeah oh I did like uh, when I grew up we at when I was young me and all the kids my my neighborhood, my family, we were talking about sex, we were talking about relationships, we were talking about all types of stuff, I crazy stuff. I was in Catholic school, yeah. so oh, wow. that explains a lot. <laughs> did you really go to Catholic school? I did, oh. that's why I'm no longer Catholic. I was gonna say, <laughs> man, I'm adding that to my list. How many interesting people, I feel like everybody yeah, should go to Catholic you said school. said this in one of the shows. I, I did. This. Yeah. Everybody should go to Catholic school. Like to We'd all be better for it. To not be Catholic. To oh, learn how to repress yeah. yourself. Right, so Cook, Catholic school. We yeah. talked about it. I remember I, that. The, my theory is that when you go to Catholic school, they repress a lot of your natural I got characteristics. Detention. For wearing colored nail polish. Right. I got detention for wearing too much jewelry. That's, I mean, that's, come on. What, 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 that, what that builds is it builds, this, <laughs> it builds resentment and drive and motivation. To get away from the church, yeah, for yeah. sure. But being in the, in the structure, it builds a structured But they don't accept questions life. either. True. And I, 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 that's where I was, I was like, we are parting ways now because I have yeah. questions about this book. You don't want to answer my questions, mm-hmm. so. Which has always been my problem with any organized religion as well because I've done the same thing, but at churches where I've asked questions and they don't like that. It's, this is the way You're it is. You're supposed to be a follower. Fact. That's it. Right. Mm-hmm. This is fact, not. There's some, I've been to some decent believe. churches. I, I'm not religious and I don't go to church, but I've been, like, there, there's different, there's different kinds. Some I've of them are. Churches. Yeah. I went with my friend who's black and we went to her church and i had the best freaking what kind of church time. what kind of church was it? i don't remember were they dancing yeah they were all dancing <laughs> okay. and I went to one singing of those ones. Yeah, and yeah. like i was like yeah i could go to church if this was church <laughs> like it's a party yeah. but here's the funny part like i grew up in that kind of church and all i want to i like i love catholic services because they're quick and oh. to the point no, but no, like, they're, they're not. not. They're not. Are you insane? It's kneel, stand, no. kneel, stand. Oh, say this chant. Say this chant. That church chance. that you went to, how long was a service when you went with your, your black friend? I didn't friend? even notice. 
was because I was having fun. <laughs> okay, correct. Whereas I would have to go to church during school because I was a Catholic school. So rather than math and stuff, if it was a holiday, we had to go to church. And right. I'm like, I want to, I, I don't like math, but I want to be in math class. That's what school is for, <laughs> Dude, not think- to go to church. And so I would go to church with like, okay, well, it's story time. You know, like I will look at it as it's story time. But those stories were so boring. <laughs> and it's like, you can't fall asleep. You can't lean. You can't, I mean, it's, you got to know when to stand, when to sit, when to kneel, when to pray, when to chant, when to go up and get your dead body pieces. <laughs> and like, that was, I went to a Catholic church recently, and I'm not going to say where I went because I don't want to like, I'm not trying to shame them, but they had a giant eight foot Jesus hanging scary. from the ceiling, yeah, hanging up. Like with the nails and everything, and I was just like, dude, this is that's weird. Like I'm trying to like I was like, oh my god, this is a very sacred place, and look at I, all the lights, and it real, everyone's so humble, and this is awesome. But there's a dead guy hanging from the shit. ceiling. That's scary. weird, man. And I got detention once for suggesting that Jesus was the original zombie. <laughs> did you really? I did. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> See, she's always been a zombie fan. Did you know yeah. did you know you're being a smart ass or were you just like I was being dead, dead serious. I was dead Dead serious. serious. I was like, dude, Uh, rose from the dead. Three days. Like, what do zombies do? They rise from the dead. Not only that, but I don't know. I forget. He was the first bringer of the zombie apocalypse. That's all I'm saying. (laughs) There's four uh, narratives, like, of Jesus' life. There's John, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. One of them says it wasn't just Jesus that came back. I forget which book it is. One of them, it's like everybody that was in the city that was dead got up. Like when he See? died. See, zombie apocalypse. Yeah. I'm trying to remember which one it zombie was. Zombie apocalypse already happened, apparently. It was dope as fuck. You know well, what? Well, no, because Lazarus would actually be the original zombie because Jesus rose him right. from oh, the dead. Oh, shit. That's right. That's right. So it would be Lazarus. There's probably somebody else. Which, by the way, the Lazarus Bowl is an episode of The X Files. <laughs> <laughs> Lazarus Pit is Bringing from it Batman. back around to The X Files. That's right. Bringing it back That's right. around. <laughs> Lazarus Pit and Batman brought the. What's his name right. back to life? Um, but back to the thing with the giant Jesus is. I like to use this as a metaphor. It's like, okay, let's just say um, JFK was like everyone worshipped him, and he came. Would he want? Would, would we have big posters of him with his head blown off? I mean, like, I don't understand. Like, I feel like if Jesus came back right now, he would look at this and be like, "Really?" You got to the worst, <laughs> that's why I, I was the worst the day of my life. That's that was all for Buddy Christ. Christ. Yeah, but that's the most important part. That's the point. Like, he died for our sins. He died for our sins. I get and that, him, but why do you want just, children to look at somebody's yeah. dead body hanging in well, there? Yeah, like, I, 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 I remember as a kid, <laughs> because, Buddy Christ. Because yeah. it's terrifying. Oh. <laughs> yeah, it's terrifying. That's exactly right. They want to scare people into freaking right. submission. Sca- that's what it is. It's about fear, and it's another form of fear mongering. Do you think that's what that is? I think that's yeah, how they absolutely. keep people. Well, think about it. That's how they keep people fear of eternal damnation. Mm. You're going to hell if you're bad. You're what going about to hell Jehovah's, if you Jehovah's Witnesses don't believe in hell. I don't know. They've got Prince. I'd be scared of Prince. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? That How guy's off balance. How dare you? That guy is off balance. In the best way heard, possible. He's falling forward, man. Have you heard Kevin forward, Smith talk man. about him? No. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear this shit. Prince is a fucking... He's, prince is a prince, man. He's a king. He's a great musician. He's a master among he's a men. He's Jehovah's Witness. Yeah. Who's yeah. paranoid as... It's okay. I love you, Prince. <laughs> He does I'm a sure great he's show. Watching. He yeah. does a great show. His live performances are legendary. Don't dare! How dare you talk about Prince? I didn't say the man wasn't talented. I said he was a Jehovah's Witness. <laughs> Could you imagine being at home and Prince comes up and is like, "Have you heard about the Watchtower?" I'll be like, like, "Come on like, in, I bring Jehovah you... God into my life." <laughs> no, I come haven't. on in and here I have a guitar right here, Prince. Please <laughs> preach it. Yeah, like I would, I would, I would go to service if Prince was doing this <laughs> I would whole go to service. service. Prince was up there. If he was the choir director. Or if he had a guitar, he was just on the side of the stage, just like over there, and I'm, everybody's just like waiting for the preacher to shut the fuck up. Like, when are we gonna get to the when we're we gonna get to the songs and the hymns? I'm ready for that dude to start strumming. Yeah, I'm not saying he's, he isn't talented either, but I will say he is batshit. He is kind of weird. Yeah, he's he says some crazy shit. Bat shit crazy. I saw an interview Very he was talented, doing, but bat shit yeah. crazy. He was doing an interview where he was trying to tell somebody that you, if you, if you believe the right things, you'll never grow old. And the the interviewer was like, um. Okay, he he's like. Wait, he hasn't aged much. He looks good for his age, yeah. but he has aged. 
Oh, like he definitely watch purple he, rain know. and then look at him yeah. And like, yeah like that's so funny he's so hairy like <laughs> if you see him back when he first got started he was hairy as hell and like you can tell like he stays perfectly waxed and oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. perfectly he's quaffed manscaped yeah. down to the cubes, you know? <laughs> I bet you he's like a marble statue <laughs> under all those clothes he's got the painted on I, you know, eyebrows I, I, I think I could go the rest of my life without knowing right. <laughs> I feel like I need to have this question answered <laughs> You made him. I just have one question. I'm not even gonna. I'm just gonna tear his clothes off since I made him. That's not gay, is it? It doesn't matter. Whatever. This is me. I'm just being open here. If I meet Prince, I need to know what that man looks like. I need to know if he's got hairy balls. I need to know if he waxes completely. I have to know. It's a. It's been sort of a dream of mine, like my entire life. <laughs> well, I, far be it for me to be a dream killer. That's right. That's but it is. Weird. It is interesting when you when you run into somebody like that who, because. With Prince, he doesn't, I mean, what do you think the, because he grew up as Jehovah's Witness, I'm assuming, right? Him, Michael Jackson too, by the way, the Jackson yeah, family, they're all Jehovah's Witnesses. They're a Jesus. whole other bag of problems. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't know if the Jacksons are the best example of <laughs> right. Jehovah's Witness. I was going to say, uh, like, I know a lot of really awesome Joe people Jackson's that are Jehovah's Witnesses. kind of a jackass. <laughs> yeah. Michael, Joe Jackson, yes, was pretty abusive, it seems like, to his kids. Right. But look what he made, though. Like yeah, if that's one what it takes, talented kid, and then Janet Jackson, and then the rest. He's like, got the talent he of a <laughs> <I> thousand <laughs> men. I don't think that was Joe Jackson, though. I think that he maybe he saw the talent and maybe he pushed him mm-hmm. further, exploited it, exploited it exactly. <laughs> but he is not responsible for that. Yeah, you, you know, the, you, besides, you besides watched them when they were kids. Man. You knew Michael was the star. Right, yeah. but Joe was the one that got him there. Like Joe, they used to they used to do this thing. Beyonce's parents did the same thing. When even they were kids, they would have them in the basement rehearsing over and over again, doing the steps over and over again, singing over and over again, on point, on point, on and point, hours at a time. Bay. I know <laughs> now she's fucking a multi, probably worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Right, one of the but richest she's celebrities not in the world. All screwed up like sitting there trying to turn is. white and stuff. I like, bet she screwed the well, fuck up. Well, she's not up. that crazy, but I'm I'm pretty sure she's, she's not up. having sleepovers yeah. with Macaulay Culkin and shit. Yeah. Like. Keeping gorillas in her backyard. It was a different time, though. Like, (laughs) that was a time when nobody could see how crazy you were. Like, now everyone can watch you. Like, everywhere you go, there's cameras. Like, back then. She doesn't seem that crazy. I bet you she is. I bet you she's nuts. I'll, I'll say this the craziest thing I ever saw of her was she posted a Vine or a video one time. I was throwing her phone. And she's basically saying to the camera, I don't know who I am. I don't remember she's how. She's drunk. I mean, probably. But she was just, she was like out We've of her been freaking there. mind. And just being I'm sure like, I made a vine know. like that. I don't even remember. So, but I bet you. That's I don't the craziest thing I've ever seen. I don't think you can accumulate that kind of wealth without being insane. Well, That's yeah, I really about believe Mariah that. Mariah Carey when she was like leaving those crazy ass voicemails for fans and shit. Where yeah. it was like, oh, yeah, hey, Mariah yeah, yeah. Carey and, and Mariah Carey unicorns they, and blah blah. It's like nobody us. people don't realize this, but Mariah Carey is like the most wealthy singer of like of all time. And she she's is the number one female nuts. recording artist. Yeah. She's out of her mind. Like, yeah, she, but I, like I think out it, of it touch probably, with reality. It probably, it probably takes a toll on you. It, out I don't of touch know. reality. That's exactly it. I think that like you can you can buy away so many problems that you don't get to develop and a personality. And people hide problems from you too. Right. When you're that rich. Yeah. People are taking care of problems before you yeah. even know that there you, are problems. You're not living in the real world. Right. I think you're protected. Joe, Joe think, Rogan said it best. He said that once you get eight million dollars, everything's free. He's like, there's no problems. He's like, you want to buy a house? Buy a house. Who I cares? Love Joe Rogan. You, you know, you want to, yeah. you, you well, want to, you, know, you want to go rent right. out the Super Bowl and run around naked? Go do it. Who cares? Right. You got it. There's well, no go consequences. Well, yeah. Well, that's exactly what they say. They say that you know, when you need free stuff, you can't get it. You got to pay for everything. Once you have too much more money than God, everything's free. Everything's free. You go to a restaurant. Oh, here you go. Just but not even house, like, not only is everything given to you, but like you have so much money that you don't even notice that you like. There's right. no sense of desperation and need breed character mm-hmm. like that's why people who have weird fucked up lives i'm looking at you why <laughs> people who have weird fucked up lives become the most interesting people it's because they had to develop a good character to deal with what life was throwing at them like you have that, to learn how to problem solve <laughs> yo shut the fuck up <laughs> I'm sorry, we've been cussing this whole time. I know we're not supposed to cuss yeah. on the Edison show. I know, I've sorry. been so careful. Uh, yeah. So careful. Oh, I'm just going to cut half this. I one. have. <laughs> I, it's, it's my fault. I've been swearing. I'm very sorry. I know I got a couple in there too, but I've been so careful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm really proud of her right now. <laughs> I love the fuck word. <laughs> you love the fuck word? <laughs> <laughs> I said the F word. It is you know, not the fuck word. I like that. I've I, been good, been so very, I deserve it. I'm proud of you. I'll, the F word is my I'll favorite get your word. So when you're not being recorded, you're just like dropping them like a sailor. I love the F word. 
I have this love hate relationship. I feel like it just like it expresses everything. Like in the Boondock Saints, when he's like, "What the fuck?" Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And they're like, "Well, that certainly illustrates the diversity of the word." Doesn't it? <laughs> and I'm like, "Yes, yes, it does." The thing about the F word is the fuck word. I'm sorry. You can cut off. I'm sorry. <laughs> what? The thing about You're the F word is... making my life harder right uh, now. That's all. This is going to be the most bleeped up episode fuck, of fuck, Talking Dead since fuck, ever. Fuck, 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 <laughs> The thing about the F word is... I'll just split into two episodes. Though. Like, people say, I don't like the F word. Don't. I don't want to hear it, blah, blah, blah. But there's things you can express with that kind of declaration. Everybody knows what you mean. Right. It, 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 it's like a shorthand. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you get right to the point. Like, oh, that dude's really, really excited. Really angry or really confused. Right. Or he hurt himself. Or he hurt himself. <laughs> and you know, right? But the other thing is, it can also be a crutch. Like, I find yeah. myself crushing with, with the F word. Where, like, I'll be thinking, like, it becomes my um or my like. I was like, going to say that. I was going to say, yeah, some people use it as their crutch. Um, That's not how I use it. No, I know. I just like it. I yeah. think you use it like a fucking surgical missile. <laughs> you use it like a precision strike. It's fucking amazing. <laughs> Um, but I, I will say this. I do think that what Seinfeld said was correct. I think you have to work harder not to use it in comedy or in your writing or whatever than to use it. So I think that it is a compliment knowing that she does like to use it as much as she does mm-hmm. um, in the debtor sense to still be entertaining and fun without cursing, being, being vulgar yeah, or anything like that. It's a very like PG. It, you know, so. PG-13 sometimes, but yeah, most you know, of we PG, don't go though. past PG-13. Hey, PG's come a long way since it used to be, so yeah, I'll take PG. I think we, <laughs> this one Jones, more thing. Indiana Jones and, and the Temple, Temple of Doom. Doom. Yeah. PG movie. That movie was horrible. Ripping hearts out of people. But I, like, I, Temple of Doom and Gremlins, both in the year 1984, changed the rating system because yes. of They were terrible. Hearts out of yes. people that should not yeah. have been Eyes were like, movie. what the? Yeah. I think we already bit by 10 minutes before, like, before you switch it up. Look, Temple of Doom is my litmus test for whether somebody's a sociopath. <laughs> like, I, I ask people what their favorite, uh, what their favorite Indiana Jones so movie I, is. I'm a sociopath. And if they go Temple of Doom, I'm going, oh. Temple, I, I'm dude, a sociopath. Temple, okay. Temple, <laughs> Temple, Temple of Doom. Doom. Temple of Doom is. I don't I pass love, your test. I love all of them. <laughs> Temple. That's your I favorite? Love Temple. Yeah. It's Me hilarious. Too. Yes. And it's fucking, like, Temple I don't know. Doom, there's something... It doesn't take itself seriously like the other one. Yeah, Temple of Doom. Okay. If you watch the other one, the, the three Indiana Jones movies, forget the fourth one. The, 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 fourth the one. first one and the last one, they're both about Nazis. They're both about ancient artifacts. The middle one is about weird stones and this cult and this... Things right. are really gross out, and they're eating brains, and the girl's going crazy, and there's yeah, bugs, and there's a little funny. kid. It's as a kid, I love yeah, that. Yeah, when you're a little movie. kid, like, you're watching that movie. It was it's amazing. Fucking, it's I was hilarious. I watched it with my eyes open. Like Temple of Doom. Oh, see, my eyes. I loved horror movies. Uh, that's what I was saying. Yeah. Thanks to my father showing me Halloween at four. <laughs> At you, age four. So, like, from then on, it was like he would show me all these movies, and I'd just be, I was fascinated. People so like you I, are the reason I'm we have like, the Saw series. <laughs> I <laughs> like love hostile. every one of those Saw <laughs> movies. <laughs> the very first Saw movie I thought was, like, nice and tight. I could tell that they were doing, they were, there was going to be some sequel the, shit going on. The, okay, spoiler alert, though. The ending, though, blew me away when I saw it. Like, and it's hard When it to first happened. Me. First time. Right. It's it hard to blew get the me. actors away. They didn't tell Carrie Hughes or that other yes. guy. They thought that was a mannequin on the floor the whole time. They had no idea about the big twist at the end. So when you see them surprised that Tobin Bell gets off the floor, yeah. it's because they were that... genuinely surprised. They had no idea. Is... He was laying on the floor the whole time they were filming, and they just thought he was no a mannequin. No way. Did he really lay there the whole time? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, it's That's just a hard movie, to believe. so it shoots here and there and move and blah, blah, blah. And, and, and so like, they would always bring him in first, just lay him down, and yeah. they come oh, in. Yeah. And, and I... they had no idea his a real guy until he stood up and that that so that's why the shock on their faces if it looks really real it's oh because it is yeah. that can't be real I, that, if that's real that's amazing yeah talk look about it, dedication to the that's craft like, that's like one of the most well-known fun fact trivia whatever from it but yeah, yeah. and that la- like when he says game over at the end of that movie yeah like I felt my heart sink. That, like, the, I was like, "Whoa!" And I was just saw was a game changer. Sure. Yeah, saw was a fucking game changer. You know, oh, it was such I, a... I love the way every movie built on the last one. It was like a puzzle. The whole series is true. a puzzle that, that you have to put. And I'm a puzzle person. I've always loved puzzles. I've been doing right. puzzles since I was two. Like I love puzzles. And so that's the way I went into looking at these movies. Is each movie is a piece of the puzzle, and you get a little bit more information. To put the bigger picture together, I like that. and that's that's how I went looking at them, and so I think that's why I have that appreciation for them is because I'm not looking at them as okay, well, this is the sequel, it's another sequel, it's another sequel. It's like it's another piece of the puzzle. You know? which, Are we? Yeah, which is true. Each one picked up where the last one left off. So the last the last episode of Dedersons, there's the strong implication that Mr. Midnight 
is a is an I was about to drop the F is an arsonist and he's burning <laughs> or, down people's places. Or he knows places. an arsonist. Right. What's going on? Like I feel like I'm, I gotta yeah, I gotta we're, be honest. We're I missed I missed episode six. I missed episode six. The Halloween one. Yeah, I told I I, I saw like half of it. I That's don't know. That's the Halloween cross dressing one. You have to go back and. Watch I gotta it. go watch. I'm gonna watch it, but. I, I don't know. Is this the first time there's been some indication that maybe there's some kind of weird, uh, weird land grab going on and, and places are getting burned down? It was, and it was the, mentioned in yeah, the sixth one. It started okay. in the sixth one. It was brought up in the sixth one. That's crazy. That's crazy. Because up until now, I just thought like Mr. Midnight was just his a hole. And now it's like, no, he's not just, he's burning <laughs> stuff down. Like he's taking he's over. Trump. Yeah. He's Trump. He's, he's becoming a dictator. He's like, we're going to get rid of the undesirables. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to get rid of the undesirables. We're going right. we're, we're to take over. We don't want him here. Like that's what he's doing. He's like, he's our Trump. <laughs> yeah. well, this is like, there's a lot of implications to that because they're all zombies. They're living in a zombie right. Right. restricted zone. There's nowhere for people to go except for other zombie restricted zones. That could be right. dangerous. Which is like, they, yeah. the idea that he's going to like try to kick people out. What's the deal with Mr. Midnight, man? <laughs> he's a sociopath. <laughs> that's the soci- sociopath side of me. <laughs> like, that's, that's the part of, he's I've part of your character? Somewhere. <laughs> like, I, I just feel like that character went from being just like a grumpy old man to being like, you know, like uh, Walter Batman White. At the, well, like Walter <laughs> White at the end of Breaking Bad. Like he started out as a mild mannered. Right. You know, chemistry teacher with you know maybe some anger issues, and now he's killing people. Or hey, per- she hasn't seen it yet. Possibly. No, no, she hasn't seen it yet. Don't spoil it. Yeah. Oh, you've not. I've what? Only, I've only I seen am, the first season of Breaking Bad. I, and don't spoil it because I'm determined to to make her watch. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna spoil. I know what happens. Yeah, because no. I, I, I think I, you I know pop- what happens. Well, it's the same yeah, way yeah. I have not watched all of the Star Treks, but I know about Star Trek because yeah. okay. it's pop culture, and I love pop culture. So. Tell me if you know what happens in Breaking Bad. Tell me what happens. Walter White, well, Jesse gets killed by what is it? The group of whatever. Don't, don't, don't and then let her, Walter no. White, like, doesn't he blow his own head off or something in the end? I'm not gonna tell you. That's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you dies. think happened. I know he dies. That's what you think happened. You think Jesse dies and Walter dies? Yeah. You have to watch the series. Yeah. Okay. You're gonna be so excited. Did you know how the original? Um, ending of the first season was is like Walt was supposed to become a serial killer within like the first season. They they did a cracked article about this, about how um like Jesse was supposed to die in the first he was supposed Jesse to die. was supposed right. to die yeah. and that was gonna send him after the guy that killed Jesse, and he was gonna trap that guy in the basement in his basement Which with a happen. shotgun yeah. pointed at him. And then the guy like the the dumbass teenage son or whatever was gonna go down there. And find him, and the guy was gonna like, okay, now I'm gonna kill myself and like shoot himself and the kid, and so the kid was supposed to die too. Wow. Whoa, I can see that because remember, in the he does lock the guy in the basement. There is a basement there is locking a basement. scene. So I'll, you know, because shows do evolve, and that's that's why I love hearing behind the scenes stories like that. Because look at the Dedersons from right. where it started to where it's going now. Like you just said, I never thought he'd be arsoning places. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, it's like you don't know that writers. Escalated quickly. This yes. Is, this is the beauty of writers. You think Chris and I are the only writers who don't know what's going to happen as we're writing? I'm sure other writers don't either. Right. And now put them in a room of a bunch of writers like Vince Gilligan is the Chris Carter of Breaking Bad. So mm-hmm. he's a genius and he oversee it oversaw it all, but it still came he had to prove it and came from his brain. So he probably did have one direction he wanted to go. The show was a success, things change, things happen and you have to change your view. It would be a completely different show if Walt became a serial killer in the span of one season well, I mean, instead of Look at the Yeah, one- that's the thing like that's what I was just thinking is like that seems like a sudden boom like he yeah. went from it's too quick. Like but, you need a gradual. Look at this way: when Breaking Bad started, what was really popular on TV? Dexter. So, but he yeah. already started out as a villain, like from the. But gym. correct. But is he the villain really? What do you do? Is you, you copycat yes. things? <laughs> you copycat things until you find your. Oh, own. okay. You're saying like maybe they were seeing like oh this is what's popular, right. so this so is the route to go. So maybe that was their idea. Let's do this way, and then all of a sudden it took on a life of its own, and then it did its own thing. I feel like the Dedersons ha- is taking on a life of its own. I also feel like. It would be different if we were a weekly show. Yeah. Like like normal shows. Because you could go, 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 right. go, go. Because then you could have more development of yeah. the story. Sure. Basically, I've got half an hour every month to tell the story. Have you guys so, thought about extending, like maybe breaking it down, 
expand it out. I need to out. not have three jobs in order for that to happen. <laughs> three full time jobs. You have an opportunity like... for the tone of the show, and this is just I'm, this is just goofy pie in the sky. I'm just I'm smoking crack here, <laughs> but like you have an opportunity for the total tone of the show to change. You got a possible arsonist. You got real estate intrigue. You got a totalitarian <laughs> backdrop, and then you've got this kid going on a lone adventure to find his parents. Like, is he going alone, or is Delia yeah. going with him? Who knows? Right, but like. <laughs> And, and is he even going to go? Where is he going to go? It's all, you know, it's a, there is a, there's possibilities there. And that's what I think we wanted mm. was for people to go, well, I can't wait for the next episode now. Which, which will be in February. Yeah. So, Ooh. you know, so yeah, we're going to take a month or so off. So like, I mean, we're not, we're not taking yeah, time off. We're still yeah. working, but uh, we got the project. 12 days of life. FML coming yeah. up. Yeah. 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 We're doing 12 straight days of FML starting on Monday. Yeah. Um, that's, a, that's right. You, you actually did it. Um, I'm getting there. You were talking about it. You were I, like, I want to do 12 days of FML. And I've I was got, like, that's I've, a lot, dude. Got, I'm in three of them. <laughs> You're in three of them? <laughs> uh, she's, she's actually going to be in a fourth one because I bought the costume and you are going to wear it. <laughs> so... Wow, that, that came across as very S&M-ish. Yeah, it's, it's not what you think. I it's bought the costume. You're going to wear it. It's not what you think. Um, 50 it, Shades of it, White. It has, it has bunny ears. It's got bunny ears? It's bunny ears. It's I can't give it away. Don't give it away. Don't give it away. <laughs> Don't want it. No, please. All right. right. Off camera. Off camera. Off, off, <laughs> off camera will tell That's you all. That's all I'll say. That was my hint. There you go. Off camera will tell you about it. So yeah, there'll be fourth. I don't know. She might sneak into another one, but no, we've already got like five of them. Did that say I hurt my penis? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. Hurt my penis. Uh, you, this one here says. Yeah. I thought maybe it was cut yeah. off and I wasn't yeah. reading. No one ever talks about my backdrop over here. Right, his shelf has really evolved his last. <laughs> yeah, that says you're kind of a dick. I got that from Angles Oblong. I met him at a Comic Con event or Comic way, Festival. By the way, the Book of Mormon is coming back to Chicago in uh, yeah, I'm a play June. Book. I think it's June. So is it really? Yeah, we're yeah. going. Oh. We're going. Have you guys seen it the first time? No. Have you seen it before? Oh I'm God! I'm dying to see oh. it. Oh yeah! Everybody needs to see that show. Yeah. Everybody needs to go see Book of Mormon. That's I'm, one of the funniest I'm plays I've ever seen it. in my life. Yeah. Everybody needs to watch the oh. Dead and then. Yeah. And then yeah, do that. Watch Make the a night Sins, of it. Then go. Yeah. To Book before of you do anything, you watch the Dead or Sins. Before you. You bought your internet. Watch it while you're driving to Chicago. Yes. Like, yes. <laughs> Not the driver. <laughs> Take the train and watch it. Yeah, I got this too. To it. My girlfriend, uh, she went to Mexico because her little sister's quinceanera was happening. She went to Mexico City and she bought me some some nice tequila. Uh, 100 años and Portrero. I suppose the royal tongue you said, but I can't say Portrero. 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 Mm, that's horrible. Yeah, I, I've never been able I'll never to roll do that my again. Eyes. Portrero. I, yeah, I, Portrero. I'm not even gonna try. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna nod and smile. Let you me make a fool of myself. Be... <laughs> <laughs> oh man, this this was fucking fun. God. Ah, fuck it. <laughs> this was fun. You, I always love when you guys come. You, you guys are some of the best guests I've ever got to interview. Aww, and I really stop appreciate sucking it. Up now. You got the job. <laughs> well, if we're talking serious. <laughs> you guys are dicks. Uh, I got shit to do. I know. Yeah, I got to work. Yeah, you really do have shit. Yeah. You got to go work. Yeah. But uh, this was great. Is there anything you can clue us into? Any ideas of where you might be going? Thoughts that are going through your head? Conjecture? Dreams? Uh, you know, waking nightmares about the show? Anything? I don't know. I just think. Probably help will come from some unexpected places. And oh Jesus, what are you, Nostradamus? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, if we're, if, we're, if we're talking dreams, uh, Bruce Campbell's gonna make an appearance. Yeah. The next episode. Whoa. We always tease Derek that we're gonna replace him with uh, with Bruce Campbell. Ash will, Ash will be the new dad of the Dedersons. Yeah. Oh man, that would be so awesome if you could pull that with the chainsaw. <laughs> <laughs> just, what, like the intro just comes on one day and it's fucking it's Bruce Campbell. <laughs> <laughs> there's the shovel over shoulder. everybody's like what is what is this <laughs> it's so much better now <laughs> <laughs> they're just gonna be like no I think the first thing I would think is y'all reshot the whole opening <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Hey. You should do that one day. Reshoot the opening, change the characters well, out, just blow people's season, mind. Season two, we're actually looking into getting um, an animated opening like like Guy Dream a Genie or uh, Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So the, 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 the idea is that every season is going to have a opening that's going to be an homage to a famous sitcom. Oh, that's really dope. Because so, you may not be aware, yeah. the first one's an homage to Leave it to Beaver and... 
and, and all I thought it was the Munster stuff. It's like, the Munsters. Yeah. Let's leave it to Beaver. I mean, a lot of them did that whole mom sends them all off yep. to their day, whatever. See, because I, I think the Munsters was also an homage to Leave It to Beaver because they oh, came afterwards. So gotcha. it was, you know, so now we're doing a homage to that. And so, so now we're going to do the animated opening. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, guys, I am hot as fuck. These yeah. lights are yeah, killing me. Yeah, I'm yeah, burning no. up. And we, and, we, and we have hoodies on. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, so thank you guys so much. This was amazing. As always, it's great to talk to you guys. I love getting your take. I love having <laughs> off-camera political conversations with Chris. If you ever pin this woman down, <laughs> ask her about what she thinks about Trump. Yeah, you're it's welcome. Not, it's not pleasant. You're welcome. It's not pleasant. <laughs> but just, but if you like Trump, don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't like Trump. You may not be entertained. Please don't oh. like Trump. <laughs> you will be entertained either way. Your blood's gonna get up. All right. <laughs> I was asked. Uh, go check out my podcast. Who's not the basement? iTunes and SoundCloud. Once again, that was No Book Entertainment Weekly presents Talking Deadisons. Thank you, everybody. And we're done. It's a wrap. Um, it's over. It's headphones. It's over. <laughs> can, can I, I think them? my ears are sweating. Yeah, I know, <laughs>